Welcome back to Weapon Manipulation and Tactics. Today I'm reviewing the newest slide package by Innovative Gunfighter Solutions, the DC Hybrid. Now our slide says Elite Hybrid, and that's only because this is their uh, first prototype slide. That was the name that they originally had put on the slide when it was still in development. They have changed it to DC Hybrid, which was a very smart move because it's consistent with where this design came from. So with that being said, we'll go back to where the design came from, which is this right here. This is their DC package. I've been running this Glock for several years now. Absolutely love the DC package. You know, the um, press checks on the front, there we go, get a better shot of that. Press checks on the front, the radius serrations that run the length of the slide, and then the top serrations. Um, you can get it with an RMR cut in the rear, so that way you can run your red dot sight. I personally don't run one, obviously, so you can get it set up however you like. They also widen the rear cocking serrations and add a couple. So all in all, you're just getting an a nasty traction package when you're doing something like that, which is exactly what you want. You know, bone stock Glocks, the rear cocking serrations are okay, but other than that, they have zero grip. It's not like a SIG 226, something like that, that has front cocking serrations, that has huge rear cocking serrations. You know, Glocks just don't have that. Not the end of the world, but you know, when you're trying to do a, a proper press check and you have nothing to grip, or you have lube everywhere or mud, blood, water, whatever, it's difficult to grip the slide. I don't care who you are, you know? So I definitely think that they hit a home run with the DC package. But as any other innovative company would want to do, they'd always want to prove upon their product. And that's where this comes in. So as you can see, it's pretty much exactly the same thing as a DC package which is hence the name DC Hybrid. So defensive carry package, but they wanted to make something that tracked faster, sh uh, shot flatter. And by doing that, to do that, I'm sorry, you need to eliminate some weight off the slide. Well, when you're doing slide modifications, obviously this one with the top serrations radius uh, widening the rears, that already eliminates some weight, not a ton, but some. So you're already ahead of the curve there. But like I was saying, it's a very fine line that you walk. You don't want to remove too much weight because then you're spending time trying to tune the gun to get it to run reliably. You have to find the right, um, sorry, the right recoil spring. And they didn't want the end user to have to change anything or have to sway away from factory OEM Glock parts, which I think is awesome. Because like with my salience and stuff, there's so many different parts inside of it, especially like recoil spring, you know, they've lightened the firing pin and done all that stuff. That's all fine and dandy, but that's not a gun that you're gonna grab and say, okay, I'm you know gonna go to combat with this, or I'm gonna trust this via, uh, trust this, uh, trust this pistol in my vehicle, or as a nightstand gun. It's just not gonna happen because it's so heavily modified. You know, that's like making your you know thousand horsepower car your daily driver. You're just not gonna do that because there's just so many variables. You know, compared to your Toyota right here that just runs no matter what, no matter what the situation is, it just works. And let's face it, that's why we shoot Glocks, that's why we shoot SIGs, because they just work. You don't have to think about it. You know that if you need to pull the trigger, it's gonna go bang every time. Don't have to think about it. And that's what it is, it's a tool and you wanna be able to rely on it. So, there's a lot of companies out there that will take um, weight off the front on both sides and on the top as well. Innovative one to stay away from that because that would be too much weight. They've experimented with it. It just, it requires a replacement of the recoil spring to get it to run even remotely properly. So they just opted for the, um, both windows to be cut on each side. And they left some material in between. They didn't just open up a huge window, which I really like because <clears throat> it gives you a little extra grip. Like with other manufacturers, when you just have this huge window, you're only left with, some of them will add serrations right at the very nose of the firearm. So you can still do your proper press check but they incorporated the press checks into their port. Genius, in my opinion. Also, still having that material there prevents uh, unwanted debris from entering the slide when you're working the pistol on the ground or if you drop it or something like that. You're gonna help prevent some large debris from going in there. Obviously, sand and stuff can still go in there, but sand can still go in there, sand can still go in there, so there's plenty of entry points for sand in general, and plus, I haven't had sand stop a Glock. So, they did that to help prevent any type of issues because 
let's face it, some people do stay away from stuff, uh, modifying their farms, like opening up windows in the slide because of that. Um, I personally haven't had any issues, but you know, it's definitely good to have those preventative measures in place. So that pretty much covers the slide. Um, you'll obviously see footage of it um, in action, shooting in 240 frames, so you'll be able to see exactly how flat it shoots. Um, when we were shooting it, I told Donnie to not muscle the firearm or you know, thumb brace on the light to keep the muzzle flat, just a regular pistol grip and just run it and see what happens. So that way we're not muscling the firearm and making it shoot as flat as possible. So when you see it have that minimal amount of recoil that it has, you know that that's barely holding onto the firearm. So I think it performs awesome. Now moving down to the frame, we opted for the full stipple package on this. Um, the gun I showed you earlier is just a little garage job, so don't worry about that. That's not what you get from them. They make their work look a lot nicer. Um, they also double undercut the trigger guard, which I love. It allows me to choke up high on the pistol. Exactly what we're looking for when you have a bone stock one like this. There's a lot of material there. So by alleviating a little bit, it makes all the difference. They do go pretty thin on the trigger guard, but it's not like some where I've seen where it's like as thick as a sheet of paper and you're like, man, if I even just bump that thing, it's just gonna break in half. Um, so I think they did a good job with that. <clears throat> this one also is rocking their enhanced duty trigger. Uh, I have a full video on the enhanced duty trigger, so check that out. Um, I will show you it real quick, just so you can see it in action, so you can see what you get. So, as you can see, chamber is empty, no magazine, no ammo in sight anywhere. Okay, turn this around here so you guys can see better. Last one. Now I can tell you that obviously you can't feel how heavy the trigger pull is, but it is definitely lighter than a factory Glock. And that's for multiple reasons. Obviously they've tuned it, they've made it perfect, but it's also, since it's a flat face trigger, it has a lower perceived trigger pull. I also like the fact that it's 100% drop-in. You know, other manufacturers make drop-in triggers. You still have to tune them with set screws and stuff like that. Um, on this side, you can see that there are some roll pins that are punched in there. Opposite side is completely smooth. So once those pins are in there, they're in there. You're not getting them out. So that's nice that you can just put the trigger in and it's good to go and you run it. You don't have to think about it. So, and also without having any of the set screws, you A, don't have to worry about set screws loosening. Um, I know that I've had that happen on mine after multiple heatings, trying to get them to adjust it properly you eliminate having that issue because then there are no set screws. Also, the set screw material is harder than the material that it's adjusting against. So over time, that set screw is wearing into that metal and that is gonna cause you to have to constantly tune that trigger to keep it in adjustment. Well, what happens is, is when you're constantly tuning it, you're actually taking it out of adjustment for the internal safeties. Well, Innovative solve that by not having any of those options available on theirs. So you can feel confident that once you drop it in, it's gonna be the same for eons to come. So they really did a good job with that. But check out that video if you want more information on the trigger. And that's pretty much it for the DC hybrid. So look forward to the footage at the end of this and you'll be able to see it in action. It's good to go. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.